Hey everybody, welcome back to Harris Family Adventures. We are back Reese and I to talk about part, I don't, I don't know what part we're on for Italy. This is the next part in our Italian adventure. So if you'd watched previously, go look at the playlist. We got lots of videos. Um, we had started our adventure by flying through Toronto to Venice and we were able to spend most of one day and a whole second day in Venice and now we're getting ready to leave, which was unfortunate because we love Venice. We had to have, we traveled through gate one, escorted tours, um, and so they took a lot of care of a lot of things for us, like our bags. <laughs> so anytime we were leaving a hotel, we would always have to have our bags out pretty early in the morning so that they could collect them and get them put on the bus. And this was extra early. This is a big travel day for us, and obviously getting bags when you're in Venice to a bus, or you're on an island that doesn't allow cars to a bus, that's a whole other thing. So we had to have our bags out at 6.40 in the morning. If you watched our full day in Venice video, you know, we went to bed pretty early and this was part of the reason why. So then they actually opened breakfast early for us at the hotel. Normally it didn't start till seven, but we were gonna be leaving by 7.45. So they opened breakfast at 6.45, which is really nice. That's one of the great things about going with an escorted tour group. There's pros and cons, that's definitely a pro. So we left at 7.45, and a picture of us here getting ready to leave. Um, we had gotten done with breakfast early, so actually before the tour group left, Reese and I were like, well, let's walk around, like soak in a little bit more Venice. And it wasn't the magic nothing, that it is. In. Nothing is open. There's nothing open. It's just everybody's unloading all of the boats, like the shops and the stores, they're getting all of their supplies for the day. So I think we were just kind of in the way because everybody was like busy doing stuff. Um, yeah. And so, we just had our big backpacks. Yeah. No reason to go outside in Venice before 8 a.m. probably. Um, so here is how we got from our hotel to our bus, since again, we were on Venice. From our hotel, we walked past the train station. Our hotel was actually fairly close to the main train station, so if you know where that is, that's helpful. Um, we walked across this big bridge, which apparently cost 18 million to build, and it is kind of tricky, like the steps change in size as you get closer to the top, and our tour guide, Francesca, said, especially when it's like foggy or any kind of precipitation, it gets slippery unless people have fallen. So anyway, we walked across this dangerous bridge. Oh, we saw a movie being filmed as we walked. Remember that? Yeah. That was exciting. We still don't know what movie it is, but so we took our little walk across this bridge. We had a couple of older people, women, with us in our tour, and they, they kind of struggled. Um, but our tour guide was great and we just kind of waited for them at the bottom. And then we took a tram and Francesca had all of our tickets for us. It reminds me of like a people mover at like an airport type of thing. Um, so we took that for about five minutes and then that took us to a parking lot and then we walked to get to our bus. So that whole process took a little bit of time. Um, but on the bus then we had about three hours to our next destination, which was Pisa, or which was Tuscany, sorry. Um, we weren't gonna spend the night there, but that's where we were driving. So I would say the first two hours of that, Francesca was giving us information on the microphone in the bus. So she was giving us information about the culture, um, you know, as we drove away from Venice, like these are some other houses that are technically Venice. This is where the students live. It's a lot less expensive. Um, all kinds of information, just a wealth. I was like, how did she just like memorize this? So that's another good thing. You know, if we were on our own and just took a train, um, we would have just sat there in silence. And so it was really nice to hear from an Italian all about the Italian history. Our bus was also very nice. We ended up with the same seats the first couple times that we rode it. And then she made a seating chart so that people sat in different places on the bus. Um, but yeah, it was like, you know, what you would imagine a big bus. It had individual comfortable seats with individual lights and um, air vents. Um, we had like t tray tables kind of thing. There was a place to plug in my phone. They did have some Wi-Fi. It only allowed a certain amount each day, but that was that was fine since we were relying on Wi-Fi for communication with our family back home. So really nice bus. We got to meet our bus driver, Luigi. So after about an hour and a half into her ride, we stopped at a gas station. I should say, the bus had a bathroom, but they said it's it for emergencies only. 
um, so that if there was an emergency, we did have a bathroom, but like, please let's try not to use it. And so we never went more than like two hours on a bus without having a break, a chance to use the restroom. So we stopped at a gas station and at first we were like, oh, let's get some snacks and then we'll go to the bathroom. And then the line for the bathroom got really long. I think what had happened was there was another gate one bus that had pulled in right before us. So they had a bus of people and then we pulled in and then a bus full of Italian teenagers pulled in. So I got in the women's line Reese was standing with me and then I was like, well, you go to the bathroom, we'll meet right here by the water. But the women's lane, you guys know, you ladies know, the dang's forever. Um, and it just took a really long time. So Reese got a little bit worried because it was just, it was really chaotic. There was so much going on and it shouldn't take me this long to go to the bathroom. It was just kind of, I just have nuts written. Like it was just nuts. Um, we paid three and a half euro for a soda there and two and a half euro for his Snickers because sometimes when you're tired and you've kind of been worried about your mom some chocolate and peanuts just takes the edge off right yeah yeah okay so six dollars to kind of get us we're back together here we go so then it was about another hour and a half to a Tuscan farm now sometimes they call it a farm and sometimes a vineyard I think she called it a farm I think it was called a vineyard I don't know here's a picture of it this is the name of the place um it was beautiful and they had two big cute dogs dogs they had two big dogs there i limited reese with my phone to only taking a couple pictures of the dogs because i didn't want 74 million um so we walked up to where they're growing grapes and the lady i'm assuming the owner um talked to us all about grapes and the growing process and and all of those types of things and then we went back down into what used to be the wine cellar. They have a different place that they keep the wine now. Um, and we had a lunch. <clears throat> so if you don't know this, we learned this on the bus from Francesca. Once upon a time, people in the Tuscan region were like, no Rome, we're not gonna pay you all of this tax on salt. Salt's super valuable. We don't wanna be paying you all of these taxes. So we're not gonna buy as much. So we're gonna start leaving salt out of things like bread. Then they realized this bread tastes awful. Let's add garlic and olive oil and tomatoes and they created bruschetta, which is delicious. But Tuscan bread on its own is not. It's horrible. It's, it's not good. Dry. And we love like bread. Strange. We love bread. We make bread. Bread's our jam. It is not good. Um, so they served us bread. <laughs> They also served us sun-dried tomatoes, olives from, they had a couple olive trees, um, and then a grilled bread. And so I would try to put things on the bread to try to help. I thought maybe the grilled bread, would... the sun-dried tomatoes were good. I liked the olives. The olives did have pits in them. We're not used to that here in America. Um, yeah. But then they served us a pasta. And that was really good. Yeah. That was really, really good. Because it was just pasta with meat sauce. Yeah. And then they served us almond biscotti for dessert, which biscotti, we don't like the texture of it, but I, the taste was really good. I'm, I'm like a fall apart in your hand kind of cookie. Like you pick it up and it falls down and obviously biscotti is not that. The texture is good. They also had a ton of wine. So I am not a big- really useful to me. I am not a big wine drinker. And she had told us when we were up in the vineyard, like, here's the wines that you're gonna be getting. So there were three red, three white, plus a limoncello, plus a grappa. So I, and she told us the order to drink them in. Um, it was kind of family style. So I started with a white. I can put a picture of me trying that. I, I just don't really. And then um, Reese got black wine. Um, so we can put a picture of that here also. So that is regular Coke, not even Coke Zero. That's full bodied Coke there. Um, yeah, and then I didn't try any of the other wines or drinks. I just, uh, I didn't really like it. So overall, it was a really good lunch. Um, you can also buy the things that they make there. I can put the price here. I took a picture of the menu, um, not the menu, I don't know. the order list I guess so you can buy things there it was a really fun experience it was a really nice experience um, we had a, a little bit of time to kind of explore <clears throat> Reese used the restroom I was sitting right outside of the restroom he got a little panicked because he 
felt like he was stuck the lock wasn't unlocking in the restroom drawer luckily a gentleman that was part of our tour went in there and just kind of talked him through like you have to keep turning it and all of the guys on our tours did say like yeah that lock was really tricky so there was a little bit of scary moment with that but we made it through just fine we got back on the bus and we had about an hour to make it to Pisa so this is when we went to Pisa um and it was funny because Francesca our tour guide had said when you come around the corner of like the fortified walls because you kind of from where our bus dropped us off we took like a long walk but it was like a train remember the train like the car looked oh, like a train yeah and then there were trailers i don't know it seemed like a fair like a ride at the county fair kind of thing it, it was kind of like a hay ride without the hay because partially to get a huge bus into any italian city center like it's just gonna happen so we did we had a variety of ways so that we would get from the bus to where we needed to go so we took this little train and then we had a long walk we came around the walls and she said when you come around the walls and you first see it it's going to be a mama mia moment and it was a mama, mama mia moment now i'm going to throw up a bunch of pictures but we're gonna tell you right now, these pictures do not do it justice in any way, shape, or form. It is so much taller. Everything. Everything is just 10 times more enormous than it looks. It is, like the baptistry is enormous. And then there's the church, of course. And then, um, yeah, the tower is just so much taller than we thought it'd be and leaning so much more. So much worse. So we have a lot of pictures, um, but they just don't do it justice. They don't do it justice at all. We had about an hour. We got gelato, and then we kind of walked around, and we took the obligatory, you know, pushing and pulling on the tower p pictures. You know, again, I thought, and by now I thought, well, maybe not. I had, had thought going into this trip we were going to get to go inside these places and then I realized like oh no view means from the outside we're not going to get inside the baptistry we're not going to get inside any places and you can get tickets for them but at that point between like the walking to get there and getting the gelato and getting there we had about an hour and I was like I, I don't I think you had to pay for those tickets. I like, don't really have to pay for something. And another couple we met from Iowa, they had said like they really thought about getting tickets. I think they even went to the ticket office, but an hour to get your tickets to get inside to really fully, you know, immerse yourself and get the full experience, like, eh, yeah, not gonna happen. So we just walked around. Now, something you may have noticed in the pictures is everybody's sitting in the shade. <laughs> you could very easily see where there was sun and shade because it. It was hot out there. Um, and they had told us that there are bathrooms, that they were one euro. And so as we were getting ready to head back to our meeting spot to get the little choo-choo train back to the bus, that's what they call it. We're not trying, they call it a choo-choo train. So we're just following what they're just following what they're doing. We're just being local. Um, we're like, well, you know, let's use the restroom. But for Reese, they said like, oh no, charge, he's a kid. So, um, and he's not even like a super little kid, but it was no charge and they were really nice bathrooms. Yeah. Air conditioned, really clean. There's an attendant there, so really nice. And then walking back to our bus, there's tons of vendors. Now this was interesting and this was true in all the places we visited. There are vendors that have wooden kind of structures with shelves and that type of thing and those vendors are approved and how francesca said it and i thought this made sense if they can give you a receipt it's a legit vendor but then every place we went there were also vendors of people just like they have a bunch of umbrellas on their arm or something like that that they're selling and i think this place had the most or yeah. maybe just the highest concentration of those vendors and they always warned us our roam guide warns us later that is a two thousand euro fine as a purchaser if i buy from one of them they also kept telling us there's police everywhere he said there's police everywhere there's police everywhere we didn't see one police officer but um there were a lot of vendors we did buy a cute little christmas ornament it was two euro i mean steal of a deal santa claus climbing the leaning tower no it's downstairs so we're not gonna get that out now um but yeah, it was a really nice experience. And we got back on the bus. This is all the same day, guys. All the same day. Remember, we had to have our bags out. So we had to be like ready by 6.40. And then we had been about an hour to get to Florence. <coughs> in Florence, our hotel was in a spot that the bus could access. We were able to be dropped off really close. Um, it wasn't a trusty part of Florence. I don't... 
I don't know Florence well. I know that surprises you. Um, I don't think it was the best. I don't think it was a bad area of town. I just don't think it was the best area of town. And as we were getting close, Francesca's telling us things about Florence and that type of thing. And I think she gave us a map of restaurants around there that maybe you could eat at. Um, she was pointing like, oh, if you go down to the second watchtower and then you go right. And she said, the train station don't go after eight. Now eight's not that late. We got there at like 5.30, maybe six-ish. And the train station was literally right across the street. So it's not like, oh, you know, stay within this four block radius. It was like, don't cross the street after eight. Anyway, um, <coughs> we're gonna stop here and put in a room tour. So this is the Star Hotel's Michelangelo in Florence. All right, this is our Florence room. It's a Star Hotel's Michelangelo. So you come in, and we have our bathroom. This is one of the rooms that you have to put your key in that it beeps at you to let you know. Um, so yeah, nice sink, maybe a little bit more storage space, so that will be nice. A huge bathtub, so that's awesome. Um, we have some storage here, and then mirror, desk. We've got our two beds. Reese is excited, there's candy. We have a little mini fridge. I'm not sure what's in that. Maybe just more storage. And then we have a nice corner and some nice view and, and then this, but it has been a long day. We are glad to get to Florence. Okay, so that was our room in Florence. Um, if you've seen the other one, our room in Venice, I think this one was bigger. Yeah. And I like, there was like the corner windows. That was nice. The windows don't have screens. So if you just open them, you can just open them, crawl right at them. Um, and <laughs> so we got our bags, they brought our bags up to us. We're like, let's go out and get dinner. Well, 6.30. And in Ven I know in Italy they eat later. In Venice, though, we were able to find places that were open. Because they were mostly open for like lunch and... Yeah, I don't think they really closed. No. Where we were staying in Florence, places closed. And so we walked around, there was nothing. I think there was one place open. But that was it. And I was like, oh, okay. So we went back to the hotel, and then I don't know, I think we did some laundry. Then we ventured back out again. Um, I will say in Florence, we saw a Japanese place, we saw a Mexican food place, so there were some different options in that way. Uh, we went to a pizza place. We really wanted to sit outside. We really enjoyed doing that, and we did it for just about every meal that we were on our own. And there was a pizza place but they said they didn't have the staff to let us eat outside. So we ate inside and it was fine and there were other people from our tour that were eating there also. So we decided to get a pizza to share and then french fries to share and of course a water. The water was three euro, the pizza was 10, it was just a margarita pizza and then the french fries were five euro and this coperto was five euro total, so 250 each. <clears throat> Here's a picture of the pizza. It wasn't very good. I mean, we hadn't, we, we'd eaten at the Tuscan farm, but that was it. So we were pretty hungry. So we ate probably three fourths of it, but mm -mm, no, the fries were like steak fries. I don't know, like small town bar, Nebraska. Yeah. They have like steak fries. They're like, they're really fat fries with a ton. Um, think about like Freddy's fries. It's like the very opposite of the continuum. And they were, they were okay. They were okay. We were really hungry. They were okay. The service was fantastic. Our two waiters, I don't know what their names were. They were wonderful. They were awesome. Um, that was one of the places that I actually left a tip. Um, and I know you don't have to, but they were really, really nice. But the, the food was, the food was not great. And, and again, we didn't have a lot of options though either so if you're interested in seeing our only full day in Florence where we wake up in Florence and we go to bed in Florence stay tuned now I'm gonna tell you we at the end of this series are gonna have our favorites list and one of us our favorite days and my favorite day is gonna be the next video so go ahead and click that subscribe button if nothing else in the very next video because it's a fun one it's a really fun day. It's a really long day, but it's a really fun day. Um, 
And also, if you have any questions or any comments or anything like that, go ahead and leave them down below. I try my best to respond to them, and I love chatting with you guys. That is all for now. We'll see you next time. I can't forget the day we met. Your eyes are blue, me piercing through.